Welcome back guys. Uh, today I thought I would take a look at Debian distributions. Now Debian was the first Linux distribution I used. Man, it has to be 20 years ago. I mean, um, and it was so difficult to install. Back then, 20 years ago, you can imagine um, the drivers were a nightmare. As a matter of fact, I installed it and used it, um, but it was more of a novelty because it was very difficult to get everything working properly. And I stopped using Linux after a while and then uh, a few years ago I started using Linux again and I was amazed at the improvements and the advances uh, in the Linux distribution which is why I I'm using Linux now at least 90 to 95 percent of the time um, and so I do have a kind of a soft spot in my heart for 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 Debian when I came back to Linux a few years ago I gravitated towards Debian and I installed a few Debian distributions. Of course, the first one I installed was plain vanilla Debian, and I had some difficulties, and I had a difficult time getting uh, help online. Uh, they are not always as helpful and I hate to lump them all together, but sometimes you find a, kind of an elite, uh, elitist feeling within the Debian community. And when I have discussed it with them in the past, um, basically their feeling is Debian um, is mainly for servers and they don't pay too much attention to the desktop. If you want to run it on the desktop, you're basically on your own. You have to find out. Um, and and that was from system administrators. Those were the, those were the um, the uh, on the forum, the administrators of the forum. Now, a lot of the users on the forum, like, you know, plain guys like me, they uh, were very helpful in, in a lot of cases. But I think the uh, long-time Debian users tend to uh, not quite be quite as helpful as I think they should be. But nevertheless, Debian is a terrific distribution. And it's not for the new Linux user because of the reasons that I mentioned. But once you have used Ubuntu or Linux Mint or Linux Lite or one of the other distributions, the, the Ubuntu based distributions, you might want to try something a little bit more challenging. And so I took a look at the Debian distributions that I have tried over the last few years and I put together uh, a list of the ones that I could recommend that you you might want to try if you're up for a challenge. Some of them are more challenging than, than others. Uh, but let's take a look at the list and I'll go through some some of the issues with you. So and these are not in any particular order but um, let's take a look at okay so Plain Debian, you can pick it up on the Debian.org website. Um, you can download different configurations, small CDs or USB sticks, tiny CDs, and network boot. Network boot basically is just the Debian in, in installation, uh, not much software. And so <clears throat> that's a really a minimal install. I usually 
Go to small CDs or USB sticks, click on AMD64, and then you can, uh, here's the net install, but you can also, you can pick which uh, desktop environment in some cases. They do have desktop environments that uh, you can download, for example, if you want it with XFCE, things like that. So that's where you would go. Now, this is, um, if, you de if you're installing straight Debian, it is one of the more difficult or challenging installations. So you should know that going in. Um, there's not a lot of hand-holding, um, but it's not as difficult as Arch Linux. But you should understand that there'll be a few challenges along the way if you want to install plain Debian. Now, next on the list, and again, these are in no particular order, Sparky Linux. Sparky um, is e pretty easy to install. It's got a lot of additional features that you might find helpful. I certainly did. I, I've done some videos on Sparky, and I uh, recommend it. I recommend it highly. So if you are up for the challenge, it's it's not quite as challenging as straight Debian, but um, I think you'll like it. it. It brings a lot of different things to the table. It's got a nice operating environment, and it's one of my recommendations. Now, Robo Linux <clears throat> currently is the only Linux dist uh, Debian distribution that I have on my PC on my computer. Um, I always have at least one Debian distribution running on a petition on my PC. Right now it's Robo Linux. It uh, brings a lot to the table. It was easy to install. Now one, one uh, caveat, um, they do charge you uh, I think $2.37 for the installer uh, but and I paid the two dollars and 37 cents and I can tell you that it was worth every penny they do a lot of work and one of the things that they have you can run Windows XP 7 and 10 virus free in a uh, virtual machine as part of the Robo Linux install now I have not tried that yet and I have every intention to do that at some point um, but that's if that's appealing to you and you want to run Linux on your computer but Windows in a virtual machine uh, Robo Linux makes it pretty easy to do that so that is another of my recommendations next on the li list is <clears throat> uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition I've installed this I would say it's probably one of the easiest of the Debian distributions to install. It's typical Linux Mint quality. They do a great job. Um, and I will say with all of these, with <clears throat> when I install a Debian distribution, that's where sometimes I need to use the dongle that I showed you in the other video. Uh, because the drivers are not configured out of the box in a lot of cases so I end up having to run that Ethernet cable from my uh, Apple Airport Express adapter until I finish the install. Once I finish the install then I can go ahead and pull in the Broadcom Wi-Fi drivers but you may not have an issue if you have a you know a generic Wi-Fi uh, in built into your motherboard or or uh, on a PCI card uh, you may find that it's configured out of the box but Debian distributions typically I have to go pull in the uh, Broadcom Wi-Fi drivers and the Nvidia drivers after the install but Linux Mint Debian Edition 2 Betsy excellent excellent distribution
If you're tr looking to try Debian, that would be one of my recommendations. Next on the list list is Solid X. Now, so, it comes in two flavors, Solid X, Solid K. Solid K is uh, KDE, desktop environment. Solid X is XFCE. That's the one that I installed. I ran Solid X for a, uh, for a bit of time. Didn't have any major issues with it. It's a very nice Debian distribution. Um, it is one of my recommended Debian distributions. Now, I left uh, a lot of the Debian distributions off the list because they, if they're, if they're geared toward towards a specific task like security or um, let's say uh, that there's a couple of them that have specific tasks, they're not necessarily everyday desktop operating environments. I left those off the list. I just included in this list today uh, desktop oriented Debian distributions and Solid X is on that list. Now if you're a KDE fan, Solid K would uh, be right up your alley, something that you might want to try. Next is one that I really like because of the the look. I like the look. I like the feel of it, and I like the fact that they've put a lot of information, a lot of work into the distribution uh, to add different things and make it unique. Now, I have installed MX fourteen point four. Uh, as I said, I really like it, and I'm waiting for MX15, which is in development, and I believe it's going to be out by the end of the year. So when MX15 comes out, you can expect I'll be doing a review on that, because I really like the MX Linux uh, products. The, the, now, just one caveat, the MX um, and the, the next one on my list, Antix, they're not the easiest in the world to install, but it's worth the effort. Uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve on that, uh, so you might want to try that. Um, I'll tell you what, if you, if you install MX Linux and you get that working properly, all of the others will be a breeze. So MX Linux is high on my list of recommendations. Antix also, um, it's a little bit more of a um, acquired taste, I think you would call it. Um, it's, it's a little bit more basic Debian. Um, if you take a look at their website, take a look at some YouTube videos, some screenshots, you'll see what I mean. But nevertheless, it's a fine distribution if you're looking to run a, uh, a very nice desktop Debian distribution. So if you recap, you've got plain Debian, Sparky Linux, Robo Linux, Linux Mint Debian Edition, Solid X, Solid K, MX Linux, and Antix. Those would be my recommendations for Debian distributions, all fine distributions, and uh, I'd be curious, guys, if you do try to install any of these, I'd be curious to hear your comments and uh, what you feel about the Debian distributions. So that's it for today, guys. That's a rundown of my top Debian distributions. I hope you enjoyed it. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Take care.